for the first time in 10 long years, the Detroit Tigers are in the postseason. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Monday, September 30th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, just visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm going to try my best to make it through this show without crying. We're going to try really, really, really hard, okay? But the Detroit Tigers are back in the postseason. They end the year with an 86-76 and 76 record that is good enough for wild card number three and a postseason berth. Welcome in, everybody. Hope you all had an absolutely fantastic weekend. I know I did. If you're wondering why I'm in a dress shirt here, I actually have the tie right over there, but I took it off. Um, I uh, I just came from Brian Fisher's wedding. I uh, just got home from his wedding a little bit ago. Brian is obviously my co-host over at Locked on Red Wings. And uh, yeah, we're celebrating him and his wife, who is a diehard Detroit Tigers fan. So we were talking about uh, the game during their wedding, which was uh, very fun. But um, yeah, I, you know, I, I figured I could either change and like look normal or I could just, you know what, we're in the playoffs, put some aviators on in a dress shirt and, and, and we ball and we can celebrate. We can party hard. This means so much. I have no clue what the structure of this episode is going to be. I'm really just showing up and throwing up here. Peek behind the curtain. Uh, Don't have much show prep done. I'm just going to ramble for half an hour about the Detroit Tigers being in the postseason for the first time in 10 years. The last time the Tigers made the postseason, I was learning how to drive. I was... uh, I was I was learning how to drive. I was 16. And it's just been such a long time. <laughs> it's been such a long time. And I think one of the coolest things about this run specifically is that I remember 2006 right I uh, I the first eight ten ish years of my life this baseball team was horrendous they were absolutely horrible and we would spend my family would spend five bucks and go down to Comerica and and, and watch a ball game and we'd lose 119 and, and it was whatever I didn't care I was watching the Tigers and then that's all I, I really cared about I had my Bobby Higginson baseball cards. Uh, I mean, I mean, you name it over the years, man. And and just just loved, just loved ball and just loved this team. And and I, I remember 06 and I remember how different it felt at, at again, I was eight or nine. Like and and just how how it felt so just incredible for all I knew was this team being awful. And for them to to just be good was this new. It, it almost felt felt like a you know a new sport all over again, right? It was like oh, like this is they can actually be good. I, I can root for a good team. And I feel like we are obviously not about me personally, but we're in another era similar to that now, 
right? Where the, there's an entire generation, and Andy Dirks brought this up in the post game show. So, so credit to to him. But th- this was there, there. There's an entire generation of Tigers fans that know next to nothing except bad baseball. Or, or that he haven't even given baseball a chance. I, I I love this sport more than dang near anything. And and to to know that this team just being bad for so long was the you know could potentially be a reason why you know younger kids are are not trying to play baseball or like don't have any passion towards the game of baseball is, is, is heartbreaking. Right. And, and so to have, you know, the, the, just a, a whole generation that now finally, I think the way Andy Dirks put it was they finally have a Tigers team to root for it is just, is so beautiful, man. And, you know, they could get swept, man. Houston's really good. Houston's a really good baseball team. They could go out there and get swept. They could get pumped. I, swept is two games in, in the wild card round. Lose two games in a row. It's very possible, right? And and obviously, I want them to raise a World Series trophy every single year. I'm not calling it a commissioner's trophy. <laughs> I, I want them to raise the hunk of metal every year, every year. That is my goal, right? I say my goal, like I'm on the team. That is, that, that is what I want to see out of the team that I watch. Obviously I don't think I'm on the team. I promise. But even if they do go out there and just get trounced by the Astros and we'll do a whole preview on tomorrow's show, right? We'll spend the entire show just previewing, the, the you know the postseason and, and previewing the Astro series and whatnot. I, am I gonna be super pissed off and upset? No, no, man. Th- this was this was incredible, and that's not me saying like the job is finished. And this was you know, like oh that that's. That's all I care about. Like, you know, we might as well just lose by 15 the next two games. Like, that, that's not what I'm saying at all. I just, to have any success, been going 500 since I was in high school, man. Like, to have any sort of success this season and to get back to playing postseason caliber baseball is, is so important for the future of this team. You know how awesome it is that all of, you know, this is the most like rookie filled playoff roster like ever. And to get all of them playoff experience pretty much off a rip in their MLB career is so incredible, right? That's so valuable. We hear all the time, man, you you go and you listen to any national pundit talk about you know, like, oh, who do we think's gonna win this series? What's the prediction, etc.? And it's it's always just, oh, well, these these guys have experience, right? They've been there before. They know how to win in the playoffs, etc. Nobody on this team knows how to do that. There's two people with playoff experience. It's Matt Veerling, who made it to the World Series with the Phillies before being traded to the Tigers, and it's Kenta Maeda, who we'll talk about tomorrow, may not even make the playoff roster. So there is next to zero postseason experience on this team for them at such a a young age and such a developmental point in their careers to get this high leverage, not only playoff, but this whole month of September of high leverage baseball experience, I, I think means the world for development. And I think it means the world for the trajectory of this organization. I think it's a great sign of things to come. Now, I'm just, I'm ultimately, I am just so happy. I, I am, I, I, I was overwhelmed with emotion on Friday. First time in 10 years, the Detroit Tigers are playing in the postseason. 
Got a lot more to talk about. All right, we'll do that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed with you when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two, Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in. As always, making us your first listen every single day. Shots to every day is the do tune in every day. We will, of course, be back tomorrow previewing the series against the Houston Astros. I cannot believe that I am even saying that. Unbelievable stuff. We'll do the, again, this episode is really just going to be like an ode to the season. Us just crying and being really happy about clinching a playoff berth, talking about the weekend that was. We will do all of the preview stuff, really get serious again, and and talk about this Houston series on tomorrow's show. Also, be sure to check out Jake Ritma with his Tigers postcasts after every game. So I I think there's so many factors that make this season special. Obviously, the, the run is is the probably the biggest reason right this team was dead in the water and and I was very wrong and and I I would I'm not going to speak for everybody but I would venture to say most people were very wrong this team had a 0.2 or 0.4 percent chance of making the postseason in almost mid-August and uh, and completely turned it around and finds themselves now in the wild card I I, I think I I just had so many thoughts on Friday my first one, I tweeted this out, was just about A.J. Hinch. And I know there's still a portion of baseball fans who just will always not be a fan of A.J. And because of his involvement with the Astro sign-stealing scandal and whatnot, I I understand. I understand. But think about on a, on a from a human-to-human like basis, right, from a, from a personal viewpoint what his last five years have looked like. This dude was on top of the world. He was the best manager on the most loaded roster that was going deep into, at worst, the ALCS every single year, winning rings, et cetera, right? Gets popped for the sign-stealing thing. Not only does he get fired, he gets exiled from baseball. He gets, he gets completely suspended for a calendar year. And the only team that would hire him when he came back was the Tigers, right? It was the Tigers or the White Sox, and Reinsdorf wanted to hire La Russa. So it was just the Tigers. The Tigers, who in 2019 lost 114 games and did not have a highly ranked farm system. Now it was getting better, for sure. But it wasn't like, oh, this is guaranteed to work, right? Like you're, you know, you're you're guaranteed to be coaching uh, or managing, uh, you know, an elite team here in a couple of years. Very far from that. And you're coming off of, you know, the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. They bring in AJ. Really good first year. Really awful second year the Tigers have. Last year, kind of a mixed bag. To get back to the postseason, I cannot imagine the amount of emotion that he has to have right now or did on Friday, whatever. Just knowing that he's back in the postseason with this team, he did not run away from the only job that gave him an opportunity. He did not run away from the challenge of building this thing essentially from the ground up and or being a part in. Obviously, Scott Harris had a lot to do with that. Uh, you know, say what you will about Avila, et cetera. Um, but like he has played such a pivotal role in this. Like, I I cannot state that enough. And and so I he was one of the first people I thought of when when they clinched and just how vindicating it must feel to get back to the postseason, a clean run this time, and and hopefully it being a sign of things to come with how young the roster was. Speaking of that, with how young the roster is, this is a, an at least American League record, if not an MLB record, but I know it's at least an American League record of most rookies 
on a playoff team. They have they have twelve. It's miraculous. Uh, I it just goes to, you know, when when you look back at the pre you know spring training and kind of like preseason time, right, the end of the winter, and they bring in Mark Hanna. They last second bring in Gio Urshela. And all this stuff in in, in Shelby Miller, like uh, most of, Flaherty was really the only one that worked out. Most of the the additions the front office actually made this year weren't great. Uh, Chafin, I guess, was kind of a, a mixed bag. He had some really good months, some really bad months. Um, picking up the option on Carson Kelly, I think, was a win. But like, and, and we can spend the off season and really go through that kind of stuff. But I I think you know getting post deadline and just being like, well. Time for the kids to step up and for it to be them, for it to be the group that we have been told for ages was going to be the group to do this means so much to me. Like, you know what I mean? It is so many, not, not rebuilds. Well, yes, rebuilds, but that's not what I'm thinking of. So many young cores fail. So many. More fail than don't, right? If you were around in the 90s, how many years in a row did you get sold about the Tigers' prospects they were getting in the 90s and how it was going to turn around soon? And it never did, even close. The 90s were a bleep show, right? A complete disaster from then all the way up until 05 and then obviously 06, right? When uh, Dombrowski, (laughs) right? Um, so it's so many young cores fail and and so many fan bases are thrown just like, Hey, just wait, just wait. When the, when so-and-so is in the majors, they'll be the ones that'll take you to the promised land. They'll be the ones to win you a ring. They'll be the ones to get you back to playing playoff ball. And for it to actually be the group we wanted it to be and that we thought it was going to be. Now, I'm not here to tell you that Torkelson's been, quote-unquote, worth on a baseball field the number one overall pick, or that Casey Mize has been a 1-1 talent in the rotation. That's not what I'm arguing. I'm not saying it's been a 100% hit rate. What I am saying is that when the final out was made, Casey Mize was in the dugout and had pitched two days prior. Torkelson was on first. Riley Green was in the outfield. Parker Meadows has become a part of that, was in the outfield, right? Reese Olsen, like all all of these guys, Tarek Skubal, obviously a huge one, all of these guys that we watched for years in the minor leagues. And we're like, man, I know we're watching John Hicks back cleanup. I know we're watching Dwell Lugo hit third. I know we are watching, you know, Ronnie Rodriguez hit fourth. Like I, I, I know, you know, Jacoby Jones, Nico Goodrum's our best player. Like I I know that that's what the major league team looks like, but golly, once we get this group up, they're going to win. And they did, they did. And this is not, uh, this is not uh, an ode to their careers, right? This is not me saying, well, Mission accomplished. They can go out and get curb stomped by Houston the next two games and then never make the playoffs again. And this was a huge success of an era. Not even remotely what I'm saying. Okay. I don't want to read comments about how I'm saying that's what I'm saying because that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that they are young with so much baseball still in front of them. So much baseball for the old English D. So much baseball in the city of Detroit in front of them. For them to accomplish this at such a young age with so many rookies on the roster it is, is dang near unfathomable. And I, I, I just think it's so cool. Not analysis, right? I'm not breaking anything down. It, it, it's just so cool that the core that we were told for years was going to be the core to take us to the promised land again, has at least gotten us on the doorstep. This wasn't a complete flop. And hopefully it's a sign of things to come and something that in the winter we can build upon and get back here and make it the norm again. So that's really what, what hit 
close to me was was those two things. It was it was the 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 next generation of Tigers fans that now have a team that they can feel hopefully if there's success to follow in future years if again I'm not proclaiming anything if there is success in future years they can really latch on to to these players and they can feel about Riley Green and Parker Meadows and 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 Tarek Skubal how I felt about Verlander and and Maglio and Pudge and and that is just the the absolute beauty of the Detroit Tigers. And it, it makes me so happy that we have a team that the city is, is so proud of again. Um, and, and players that the city is so proud of. And it's just, it's been a long time. And I'll tell you what, I am never going to take winning for granted ever again. Cause I think I did. I think I did. I think in that 2011 to 2014 stretch there, I think it was just so, okay, yeah, like we'll be really good, you know, whatever. I'm never going to take that for granted ever again. And again, like job not finished. I, I, I'm i not trying to say like this is the finish line, but this is such a monumental moment and step. I, I, I'm trying to find the line to walk of like what the appropriate amount to celebrate a playoff berth is. I don't want to act like we just won the World Series. We didn't. We haven't done that in 40 years. And that is embarrassing. And, and quite honestly, I think the Tigers are one of the, the proudest organizations out there and one of the more historic organizations out there. I think it's ridiculous that it's been 40 years. But you can't win the World Series without making the playoffs first. And we just took one of the youngest rosters in baseball and one of the most rookie-filled rosters in baseball history to the postseason, and they're all under control for a long time, and there's a good farm behind them, and there's a fan base that is rallying around them. Celebrate step one, even if it's not the finish line. Let's keep the ball rolling. Got a few more points I want to bring up and share with you. I'm going to try not to cry. I'll send you off on your Monday. We'll be back, obviously, tomorrow previewing this uh, Astro series. But more today still. We'll do that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the best in the business. They're clutch, and they also have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. There's so many great features on Game Time. Uh, you have seat views where you can get a panoramic view of your seat before you buy, all in pricing where you can toggle the feature and get your total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Um, it's fantastic. And then obviously your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the entire ticketing industry with the game time ticket coverage. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown MLB for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Lockdown MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in. As always, um, I, I think one of the other things that I thought of, and, and credit to uh, to Jed on, on Twitter, absolute dog, um, one of the bigger Tiger fans there are cheering us on from the UK, wasting, uh, sacrificing a lot of sleep. I say wasting. Back when we were losing 114, I think wasting is probably fair, but uh, sacrificing a lot of sleep. To, uh, to watch the Tigers every night. And uh, he, he made a great point where he listed off all of the things that have gone wrong for the Tigers this year. And I think that's just such a brilliant point. Like, if, if, if we would have gone into this season and I had a crystal ball and I didn't know the record, but I could get individual player breakdowns, right? And you, I, I could get a list of uh, an individual player breakdown for what they did in the 2024 season. Not a stat line, but a but a written breakdown. Parker Meadows, 
demoted for performance. Spencer Torgelson, demoted for performance. Kenta Maeda, unstartable. Jack Flaherty, traded at the deadline. Reese Olsen, hurt. Riley Green, hurt again at one point. Kerry Carpenter, hurt for a long time. Winsiel Perez, called up, does decent, hurt. Carson Kelly, traded. Andrew Chafin, traded. Shelby Miller, looking like a brutal signing. Got DFA'd before the end of the season. Joey Wentz, DFA'd before the end of the season. That, that, that's like the tip of the iceberg. That's not even, again, that's not even everything. G. Urshela, DFA'd. Javi Baez, one of the worst offensive seasons literally ever. If you would have laid all of that out going into the year, would anybody have gone, well, sounds like we're going to be playing in October for the first time. No. I can remember coming on here in April and, and saying, if this team wants to make a run and make things interesting, they're going to need Riley Green to be healthy. They're going to need Spencer Torkelson to, to improve on what he did last year. They're going to need this, that, and the third. And this is, again, credit to A.J. Hinch, but, I, you know, A.J. gave props to Chris Fetter as well. And I, however many, however much props, is that English? However much props, that doesn't sound right. I'm not going to say it a third time. However much credit you want to give Chris Fetter is not enough. This, this, this guy has put together, and it's not just him, right? And, and he will be the first person to tell you that. Lund, Nieves, a lot of people in the front office that do fantastic work. Obviously, AJ is a part of that as well. Scott Harris is a pitching first guy. Like, th there are so many people that are a part of this. The fact that they all got their heads together and figured out how to pitch their way into the postseason from the trade deadline on is nothing short of genius. They had. One healthy starter from their opening day rotation. And a bullpen that was struggling. And they promoted guys that a lot of the fan base either hadn't heard of or just didn't expect to be prominent fixtures in the in the bullpen, in on the team period this year. And they were incredible. This run does not happen without the pitching they have received at all. I'm not even like, oh, they would have been close, but no, they, they, they would have finished probably sub 500 if the pitching didn't look the way it has over the last seven, eight weeks. Unbelievable job by anybody who took the mound for this team during that stretch, first and foremost, and then obviously the coaches and the front office that helped forge this just patchwork of bullpen days that has led to the Tigers being back in the postseason. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, literally. Uh, it poured rain the rest of the weekend, and the Tigers did lose two of three. They dropped this series. I don't care. I really don't. Um, I, I, I just don't. Okay, so we're playing Houston and Houston instead of Baltimore and Baltimore. Sure, man. These are all playoff teams. If you think you're going to, like, avoid someone or, or, oh, I want this path instead of this path, y'all haven't haven't rooted for a playoff team in long enough to unhook. It's just, that's just not how it works, man. These are all playoff teams. They're, they're all really good. I, I I honestly completely agree with the decision to use Maeda and 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 limit the amount of high leverage, really good arms over the last two games. I completely agree with it. I would rather be fully rested in Houston than burnt out in Baltimore. That's just how that that that's my opinion, and that's why under no circumstance are you, should you have used Scooble on on Sunday either. Completely agree with saving him. Now you go to Houston in Houston. 
The Tigers are back in the postseason, baby. I made a video about this the night that they clinched, but I want to thank everybody in the media who uh, who has covered this team. Um, we're so blessed with fantastic beat writers, but um, th there's so many other people. The Tigers Minor League Report guys, anybody who has worked with Tigers Minor League Report, right? I, I, I love Raj and Chris so, so much, and they're such great people and have been so kind to, to me over the years. But that's a whole staff, right? It's not, it, that's not just those. Two. There's a lot of contributors there. So if you're one of those people, you deserve a ton of credit as well. I already mentioned our beat writers. Anybody who has ever thought about, done it, you know, recorded a, a show about this team, put content out there about the Tigers, written about the Tigers. I don't care if you have five Twitter followers and and just tweet, uh, you know, live tweet games. That's a grind. I I know. It's a grind. I have never covered a good baseball team before. A good Tigers team before. Ever. Been doing this for three and a half years. Not once have I covered even a 500 team. Nonetheless, a playoff team. So I don't know what I'm doing either. Some of you would argue that I, I never know what I'm doing, which to that I, I, I chuckle. But uh, And you're probably not wrong some days. But uh, the media that has grinded year in and year out and sacri it, it is such a sacrifice to these media members that are that are at Comerica so often, traveling with the team so often, right? In, in making people like me who just get to hop in front of a camera and talk for half an hour every day about the team, making my job so much easier and my life so much easier. So I applaud anybody. Who, who has ever done any amount of coverage for this team. And uh, we'll, we'll end with a, with a thank you to the Tigers fan base and the listeners of this show. Um, I, am, I am forever grateful for anybody who has listened to this show. And I cannot express how cool it is to be able to experience the ending of a 10 year playoff drought with thousands and thousands of people that are as passionate about the Detroit Tigers as I am. That that's, that's all I've ever wanted. All I've ever wanted was for the biggest baseball and Tigers community I could possibly find to throw myself into. I've been chasing that for my entire life. I love ball and, and I, I just want, I, I've always wanted to just, to, to just find, you know, that. And I have been blessed with the ability to find that in this show. Um, and so I'm, I'm so, so, so appreciative of anybody who has ever listened to this show. And, and this has been such a, a whirlwind and such an incredible ride of a season. And I hope that they keep winning. I, I really do. But no matter what happens, this has been truly unbelievable. And, um, you know, I was, I was talking about the, the next generation of, of Tigers fans that are, you know, may have the ability to root for this team like I used to. I, If I could tell my younger self that someday, long after your heroes, Brandon Inge and, and Pudge and Dimitri Young and Chris Shelton and Curtis Granderson and Placido Polanco and Carlos Guillen, Marcus Thames. I mean, heck, man, Mike Maroth. Long after all of those guys that, that you idolize have, have retired and moved on from the game of baseball. Long, long after that. You are going to watch a team... Literally, 
go from the worst team in baseball and one of the worst teams ever to a playoff team. And you're going to be able to experience that with thousands and thousands of people every day. I would have said, you know what? I think everything's probably going to be all right. So I, I thank all of you for allowing me to be a part of your day in any capacity. I appreciate and love you all greatly. I didn't cry. Let's preview a playoff series tomorrow, eh? Let's do it. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will, of course, be back tomorrow previewing the postseason, previewing this Astros series, the ins and outs, everything you need to know about this three-game set in Houston this week. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. See you tomorrow. Go Tigers.